This is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk to you why the probabilities of 25, 50, and 25 are assigned to the P10, 50, and 90. So why are these percentiles, 10, 50, and 90, important? Well, they're often used as the endpoints in a tornado diagram. The tornado diagram has to have refl reflect the uncertainty of each of the uncertainties. And so oftentimes it's the P10 and P90. It could be the P5 and the P95. But you want to use percentiles rather than some multiplication. See another video that I've generated on that subject. And then often these percentiles are often the values in a three-branch uncertainty node in a decision tree. That's the way I learned it anyway. you got three branches for every uncertainty with these percentiles. And then the issue becomes what probabilities to assign to those branches. One method is the equal area method, which assigns a 25, 50, 25, and the other is the Swanson method that assigns 30, 40, and 30. Uh, these percentiles, P10, 50, and 90, are also the inputs for a number of distributions, or at least they could be, such as the normal, Myerson, or log normal. The normal and the log normal could also be defined as the mean and the standard deviation. However, sometimes it's difficult to know what those numbers are when you're talking to a subject matter expert. And talking about the P105090 might be an easier conversation. Let's go look at uh, an example model and see what we can learn. Okay, here's the model. Let me explain what's in here. First of all, I've defined a discrete distribution with values of 10, 15, and 25 for P50, 10, 50, 90. And you'll notice it's a non-symmetric distribution. And that results in the orange line shown down here. You can see the 25, 50, 25, and the values that we discussed up above. So then, I fit those parameters to a Myerson distribution. And you can look up a Myerson distribution on Wikipedia, uh, but it uses the same inputs, P10, 50, 90, and I plotted that. Now here's what I've done. I've separated the Myerson distribution into three components. Those values that are P25 and less, those values that are 25 to 75, and those values more than 75, and calculated those expected values. And they are shown here. And you can see that these numbers here correspond very closely to the numbers up here, the inputs. So 9.6 versus 10, 15 versus 15, and 26.4 versus 25. Now, what if I was to change this to 35? And this is going to make it more skewed, right? So the question becomes, does the 25, 50, 25 still represent that distribution? So now this Myerson distribution is way longer. It's got a really long tail now. But once again, you can see the Myerson distribution, P10, 50, 90, going in here as giving you a proper representation for the expected value. Oh, I guess I should have pointed out here also, here's the expected value of this, this um, the discrete value, and here's the expected value of the Myerson, and the percentiles, you can see, are, are the same. So this is why I think the, the 10, uh, using 25, 50, 25 is the right number because it represents kind of the equal area solution. If you'd like to learn more about SIPMath, visit www.probabilitymanagement.org. Uh, you can read The Flaw of Averages by Sam Savage. You can also review my many videos on YouTube uh, channel. Uh, you can look for Brian Putt. And these cover the SIPMath tools that were used to generate the model I shared 
Uh, they also talk about cost of schedule, risk analysis, portfolio analysis, value of information. There's some mine testers. There's information about tornado diagrams, different types of tornado diagrams. So uh, feel free to explore that uh, by YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.